Hello again. Well, I'm going to embark on another project. Um, I'm going to build a brewery controller. Now, I already have a brewery controller. Um, works great. Um, I'll still use it. But I want to build one that's a little more portable. And a little bit smaller than what I've got. So it'll be a single PID. And I'm going to set it so I can go either 240 volts or 120 volts on the uh, outlets at will. Um, but I'm also going to have a 120 volt outlet for my rims. So it'll be one PID, it'll support both outlets, uh, and I'll have relays in place that'll switch power back and forth. Anyway, I've got everything laid out here in front of me. I'm going to go through it uh, and tell you a little bit about what I have, why I have it, and uh, explain what my thinking is uh, with the build I'm going to be doing. Well, here's my table full of parts. Um, I've got pretty much everything I'm going to use here. Uh, there are one or two parts I'm still waiting to be delivered. Uh, I expect them to be here today or tomorrow. But let me go over what I've got. I'm going to use a pointer to kind of uh, easily point out what's going on here. So, bear with me. Alright, right here is my DIN rail. Now, on the DIN rail, I can mount my relays here and this relay. And if you look on the back of these relays here, there's a little spring-loaded mechanism that makes these easily uh, rackable on the DIN. Let me show you. All I have to do is put it on the spring end, push forward a little bit, and it snaps right into place. Works pretty good. Um, over here on the far right, I got my PID. Uh, standard my pin. Uh, TD4SNR, I believe. Um, it has manual control, it's relay output, and I believe it has a single alarm, which I'm not going to hook up uh, initially. Although maybe I will, we'll see. Um, here's my project box. I believe that's uh, 8 inches by 8 inches by 4 inches tall. Um, that should be plenty of room for everything I'm going to put in here got some wire nets I'm going to be using uh, various switches I got three switches here this one the black switch over on the left here get these wires out of the way um, that's an on on left and right and off in the middle that's what I'm going to be using to adjust the voltage going to the various relays um, one side will be 240 the other side will be 208 or excuse me, one side will be 120, the other side will be 210, 208. Um, these two switches here, one will be on off for the entire system, and the other one will be on off for a pump. Uh, back over here to the left, I got the wiring I'm going to use uh, to hook up the PID. Uh, it's just regular standard 24 gauge or 22 gauge hookup wire. Um, I got some left over for my other controller, I'll use that up first. Back here, I got a fan. Uh, I did learn when I built my barbecue controller that if you don't have a fan, uh, your relay tends to melt and fail. So I'm going to put the fan in there. Even this heat sink is not enough to keep that thing uh, cool. Fan will work great. I won't have any issues. Down here I've got a bunch of connectors I'm going to be using. Uh, spade connectors and uh, push-on connectors which will push on to the relay uh, connecting points here. Uh, moving toward the back here, I've got my outlets. This is my uh, 210 volt, 208 volt outlet, 220, 221, whatever it takes. Um, this is my 120 volt outlet, and this is your basic 120 volt outlet too. You'll notice I painted the uh, close half of that red, that's going to be the outlet I'm going to use for my pump. That'll be a switched outlet. The outlet on top will be an always-on outlet. Um, this is a, um, let's see, uh, L520. This is an L630. Um, I've got uh, a switch plate here that I'm going to use. Uh, the outlets are going to be here. I'm going to drill a hole where these switches normally would be for my two power outlets. Um, of course, got some electrical tape. Back here, I've got the power input outlet. Now, I'm debating on whether I'm going to do this or not. 
but if you look this power outlet has four pins on it uh, two hots a ground and a common uh, I've got a plug here that will go into that if you excuse me a second I dropped it okay so between these two things uh, the twist lock plug line it up push it in twist it it holds it in place uh, if I put the female end on my power cord back here it'll make this easier to move around without the power cord hanging all over the place but you'll notice on my power cord I do have a really nice uh, I don't know attachment thing that will hold the cord in place uh, really snugly so I'm kind of debating whether I want to go ahead and use this attachment or this attachment uh, if you'll notice on this thing it is about two and a half inches deep I'm not sure how that's going to work out with the depth of my box but we will see uh, the only thing I'm really missing here um, is my terminal blocks um, I've ordered four terminal blocks that will allow me to hook the power up to the terminal block and then branch power off to all the different things from that terminal block. Uh, those are the things I'm waiting for delivery. They're supposed to be delivered later today. Uh, well, with that, I'm going to get started. I went ahead and I put some masking tape on top of the lid of my project box. So I can kind of get an idea where I want to put stuff and mark it. Um, the things that are going to be on the top of it are going to be my main power cord, my um, pump power cord, and the on-off 220-110 power switch. In addition to that, I'm going to have the PID and a temperature outlet which I didn't show you well here's the top of my project box uh, I went ahead and put masking tape on it so I could uh, mark out how I want it to be configured uh, and maybe uh, change it if I don't like the way it looks or what I've done but here's what I've got okay I've got my PID here um, I'm going to put the PID up in the top as you're looking at it um, and I'm going to do it it's going to be upside down for you but I need it so I can see what I'm doing here um, I think I like the PID up in the top left uh, let's see I've got you know, you know I'm going to put the PID eh, put the PID right in the middle now I got to keep in mind that I'm going to have on the far side here on the bottom uh, that's where my power outlets are going to be and I'm going to line up three of them uh, I'm going to have the uh, 110 then the um, 240 and then the other one uh, and I may go this way have the 110 on the left and the 240 in the right 120 in the left 240 in the right whatever um, anyway but that's going to be in the side here um, I'm going to have the power cord probably coming off of this side over here um, I don't I'm going to work that out in a little bit but uh, first thing I, I know I need I need the pit on the top um, I'm going to need my various switches and again I'm going to have an on off switch for the whole unit here um, I'm going to have another on off switch for the pump and I'm going to have a uh, 210 uh, or 110 volt switch there and the center that's off now that allows me to shut the element off in a, a second all I gotta do is flip that switch up to the middle because it's uh, on in one side on in the far side and off when it's straight up and down uh, that will allow me to stop boil overs hopefully um, now one thing I didn't mention before, I am going to add another switch uh, 
and that's going to be down here somewhere probably right here uh, at this end and what that's going to allow me to do is switch the, uh, the thermocouple type um, from a PT100 to a uh, K-type. I've got a, a, a handful of old K-type uh, thermocouples and what this will do is it'll allow me to switch between the two by jumping and unjumping one of the ports on the MyPin PID. Uh, one other thing I didn't mention is I've got an XLR female connector here that's got to go on here and that's where my thermocouples will plug in at. So this is going to be the front. Uh, the PID, power, uh, pump, PT100K, the uh, XLR in, 110-220, and of course the PID right there in the middle. So I think I like that layout. Um, I think I'm going to take a picture of it with my phone so I remember it. Then what I'm going to get started with is drilling the holes for the switches and cutting a hole for that the PID. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else that's going to be in the top. Okay, so anyway, I got the picture in the camera and I'm just going to... And with the picture in the camera, um, I'll remember how it goes. I think I like the looks of that. The only thing I might move is the pump switch. Maybe I'll move that down a little bit to get away from the overall power so I don't accidentally hit it. Um, well, I will have to keep in mind that these two things here, depending on how far they stick in, uh, they might, once I put the power things in this way, be a little too deep, and I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that. Oh, let me turn it sideways so you can see. Uh, this is only going to stick in that far um, so I think I'll have no problem with clearance um, the other one here I might as well just take it out of the package if it'll take it out of the package my goodness The other one, yeah, it's not very deep either. Um, and finally, the power for the pump. And just like I said, having a 120 volt outlet to have um, be good. All right, next step is drilling, cutting. Uh, we'll work on that. Okay, I've got a little bit further along. What I've done is I decided that I'm going to put the outlets in first. That way I know um, how far in the box they're going to sit and I know if they're going to restrict where I can put the other things. But what I have done here is I've taken a hole saw and as I mentioned before I've drilled some holes in my uh, face plate so I can mount these things. Now, what that does is that tells me where they need to sit on the side of my box. And what I'm going to do is mount them like this. <clears throat> now you'll notice um, they're going to be a little taller. Well, I should say, if you look from the side here, uh, the face plate's a little taller than the box. Um, that's all right because I can cut it and make it the right height. But what I wanted to do is make sure that I've got these lined up so that when I cut the hole in the side of the box, I can cut it. Now, just a little trick for what I did uh, to do these. I took the face plate and I mounted it on a piece of wood and just screwed the face plate all by itself into the piece of wood. And then using the wood as a backing, I used my hole saw 
and drilled down through the face blade into the wood so that it would cut the holes nice and steadily. I did that on my drill, drill, drill press and uh, that'll be good. Next thing I need to do is transfer the back of these, this hole here, or the individual holes, um, over to the side here. So that's what I'm going to work on next. Time to catch up a little bit. I've been working on the controller and you see I've actually done some stuff on it. Um, let me show you a little bit of a close up here and tell you where I'm at. Here's the inside of my controller and I'll work my way around and show you what I got here. On this side over here, I've mounted all my plugs and I've got them all wired in place. What I did is I took my faceplate that's going to go on these and I actually screwed it down onto each of those outlets and then I took that as one unit and held it up on the side here and marked where I needed to cut out a box for everything to fit in. Once I had that centered and lined up, I then went over to the side and I'll take the plate off and I looked at where the holes were here at the top of each of the outlets and the bottom of each of the outlets and with this lined up here and eyeballing it I made a mark and I don't know if you can see it on the top of the box here where the screws are going to need to go in. Once I did that I was able to make another mark on the bottom. Uh, I mounted all of the outlets, made sure they still lined up on the faceplate and uh, good to go. So once I have the top on I'm going to cut the top off of this faceplate and uh, it'll be great. Uh, I did take the outlets back out and put the wiring in them. So I'm done with that. Now it's just a matter of taking the wire and putting it on the terminal strip. Uh, one thing I didn't show last time on the earlier video, and it has been a few days, is I bought some terminal strips. And these are actually terminal strips on a DIN. Uh, and each one of these is independent. You can actually uh, take the end off here and uh, pull off the terminal strips that you don't need. Uh, and what I've done with that, and I'm not sure I'll be able to get a good shot on the inside of it. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Well, on the bottom of each of the strips, I made some loops like this, and I tied them together. I just I put it under here and tied them together so that once I have a hot wire here and a hot wire here and a hot wire there it'll be tied across to the post next to it so I actually and I'll see if I can bend it out if you can see you'll notice there I've got uh, a two hots the neutral and this last one's going to be ground so I have three ports here and a fourth one in the bottom for the blue wire, the blue hot wire, um, three ports here and one on the bottom for the red hot wire and uh, three ports here uh, for the yellow wire. So um, it'll be good. And you can't see, I've got these bent underneath so they're actually two more loops or one more loop on each of those but that's tucked out of the way now the problem I'm having right now is that I'm starting to run out of space uh, I gotta put my pit in here and that's gonna mount on the lid I've got to put three different relays in here and I've got to put my SSR 
in here. Now those aren't facing the right direction. But as you can see, it's gonna get pretty snug. Not only do I have to put things at the bottom, oh, and I've also got another power supply for the fan. Um, oh, that's one thing I didn't mention. Uh, on the side here, I mounted a fan. And you see on the inside there, it's, yeah. uh, the fan was a little tricky. Um, it was really hard getting at the nuts on the bottom of the fan. Um, what I ended up doing is I took uh, my screws and a nut and I screwed them to the fan with the fan not mounted yet and then I took some hot glue and I glued the nuts to the fan. Uh, then I was able to take the screws off and put them in. The nuts were glued to the fan so since they were already mounted it was easy for me to uh, put the screws in and hold it in place. The fan had a guard on it so that looks really nice on the outside. Um, anyway, that's it. But it's a uh, a DC fan and it runs on 5 volts I believe and uh, I bought a little power supply which is an LED power supply. I can't remember what I paid for it but uh, I gotta put that in there somewhere too. Uh, so that's the next part of the process. Uh, now, while I'm doing all that, as I started to say, once all this stuff is lined up in here, uh, I got to take into account how far it sticks up. Now, this is going to be on the top. So, when I drill holes in the lid for various switches and the PID, I don't have something underneath them. Uh, now, it looks like if I put the PID like over to this side of the fans and uh, mount the SSR over here next to it, I'll have enough space there. Um, and it looks like I've got about a... Maybe about an inch above the SSR. Now I want the SSR right in front of the fan. I don't know if you've seen one of my earlier videos where I made a barbecue controller slash uh, rims controller, a 120, vo 120 volt one. Uh, I, I melded the SSR because it got too hot in the box that I was using. That's why I put the fan in there. Uh, this will save me a lot of hassle later having to replace an SSR that gets too hot. Plus it'll cool down everything else. So. I think it's important to have that fan. Now this fan came out of a computer, uh, so it's in good shape. Uh, but I've got to mount everything so it's out of the way from top to bottom. I have room for the switches and I have room to move my wires around. I mean, these are 12, 14, and 10 gauge wires and uh, I'm going to need space to get them around the box. So that's going to take a little bit of uh, figuring out. Uh, but that's where I am right now. I'll pick it up when I get a little further along. Um, uh, to explain what I have done here a little bit more, when I did the fan, I used a hole cutter. Uh, and uh, made, used the hole saw just a little bit smaller than the fan. Uh, when I cut the holes here, I used my little my Dremel with a saw blade on the end of it that I picked up at Harbor Freight and I was able to cut these out here. Um, I've also had to use that little saw blade uh, over here to this thing stuck down a little bit and I had to uh, grind it out of the way. There's a little uh, thing that stuck up in the middle here. I had to grind it out of the way so I could lay things flat. Um, I did buy a DIN strip here that I was planning on using for these things but I think I'm going to end up facing them the other direction and the DIN thing won't be uh, usable so I'll use that on another project uh, I am wondering if I'm going to have the space still uh, I might be able to do something like this uh, it's really tight underneath that terminal strip once I get wires on there uh, I wish I had an extra inch on this box, but it's really going to be tricky here.
I want this over here because I want this right next to the fan. Uh, the fan is going to blow in, not out. Um, there's going to be plenty of air space coming out at the outlet, so there won't be a lot of back pressure. If necessary, um, I might drill some holes over here. Oh, plus, I need to leave space over here for the power cord to come in. Uh, that'll come in right next to the fan. Uh, either that, I'll have it come in underneath the terminal strip. Uh, but then it'll stick in quite a ways. Uh, so, I'll come back in a little while. Well, or a day or two, and update you on the progress. A little bit further along, um, I'm getting ready to start making some cuts in the lid here. Uh, if you look, I've got everything mounted in the cabinet itself. Um, I did go ahead and use the DIN rail and I was able to uh, fit all of the relays on the DIN rail and mount them inside. Uh, as I pointed out before, I've got a fan on the side. This is the power supply for the fan. Uh, but the stuff that's going to be mounted on the box is done. Uh, the only thing left to put there is I'm going to have to drill a hole here for the power cord. Um, other than that, it's pretty good. So. What I've got to do now is take the lid here and cut a hole for this. Um, I'm not going to uh, show you the whole process there, but what I found out is when I put this inside here, it works best if I put it like on a quadrant, like the top inside corner of a quadrant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect this on both sides and where the X meets that's where the uh, pit is going to be. Uh, then that'll leave me all kinds of room for all the switches, the XLR, uh, temperature probe input and uh, I'll be ready to, to wire it once I get everything mounted. So uh, I'll come back when I'm a little further along. Well. Got a hole cut, took my Dremel, um, hand drill, hand tool, and um, got a cutoff wheel on it. I marked the square using my um, ruler here, and like I said, went across there. And then I took my um, PID and lined it up to see how wide the hole needed to be. Um, and actually, I also measured it. It's uh, 45 millile millimeters. Um, so I was able to mark it, uh, cut it, took my time. It's kind of weird when you cut this plastic, it pretty much melts it. Uh, unlike my other blade that I used when I cut the uh, outlet things, which was a wheeled saw, I decided to use a cutoff wheel and it was a whole lot cleaner. Uh, other than it was weird that it melted as opposed to um, creating sawdust uh, but anyway let's see what happened here uh, so it's going to be this direction on the uh, box okay. uh, so up is going to be like this so let's put it in make sure it fits well Okay, I've got the. Okay, I got it in the hole. Push it in. Uh, when I'm finished, there's some little clippy things that slide in here and hold it in place. But there it is. Uh, and there's what it's going to look like. So, one more step done. More to go. A little further along. Uh, I've drilled a hole in the side and I've uh, put my cord through there with the uh, cord holder mechanism uh, and I've started attaching the cord to my terminal strip. Now if you notice the ends of the cords have these little eyelet things so I'm able to put it right in the terminal strip 
and uh, screw it right down. So I'm going to finish this up and uh, come back in a little bit. More progress. Uh, you can see I've got all the switches I need mounted. There's the back showing all of them. Now I'm just going to um, put my pit in there and put it right side up. Now before I do this, um, I'm going to show you this right there. That's actually the PIDS wiring diagram. Now I'm going to take a picture of it with my phone so that I have it available and I can use it uh, when I wire things up and know I'm hitting the right um, terminal ports on the back of the PID for the right application and so I'm putting them in the right place. Uh, but anyway, there are ports here for an alarm, for power to power the PID, uh, for the temperature sensors, and uh, for the SSR for it to send pulses out to the solid state relay so that it can uh, control everything, I guess. <laughs> so that's what it's for. Uh, so anyway, now if you look, one thing I'm going to do, and I'm hoping that I can get a decent focus on this, uh, on the bottom uh, corner of it, and I guess looking at it, the bottom left corner, uh, you'll notice that there is a place for the temperature sensors, and you can use multiple kinds of sensors with this. Typically you use a PT100, but I've also got some sensors that are K-type, so what I am doing is the switch that's next to my temperature input, uh, it's an on-off switch which will connect and disconnect ports uh, 8 and 9 I believe on this and uh, if ports 8 and 9 are jumpered uh, and I'm, I could be backwards on this but if 8 and 9 are jumpered uh, it's set for the PT100 if 8 and 9 are not jumpered then it's set for a K-type now the switch disconnects and connects the jumper whether it's on or off so uh, that's why I put a switch um, I've also got switches here is a double pull double throw switch and that's going to control whether my main uh, outlet on here which is the orange one uh, runs at 220 or 110 uh, the middle one is a 110 outlet an L520 this is an L630 uh, and then of course standard uh, uh, NMA or standard ports for the plugins for the other ones. The bottom one's going to be switched for uh, my pump and the top one's going to be always on because I actually do have an auxiliary uh, controller that I can use for my rims at the same time as I use this one for the boil so that will plug into the always on port here and so I can use this for two uh, PIDs at the same time. Uh, if you look at my other video for my barbecue controller, uh, rims controller that runs at 120, uh, that's the one I'll be using uh, when I need to use it that way. Um, mainly this is going to be like a brew in a bag controller, but I did want to add the 120 volt outlet so that if I wanted to run a rims during mash, I could do it. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to continue on and uh, we'll come back. Uh, I'm going to wire this on the fly. I pretty much in my mind know what has to be wired and how. And I do have my old controller back in the corner here uh, that uh, I can refer back to if I come up with any questions. Uh, I know I posted pictures of the schematic on that uh, as part of the video I did on it. Um, I'm probably initially not going to have a schematic written out on this because I, I know what needs to be done. It's pretty straightforward once you've done it. Uh, anyhow, we'll come back. Done a little more wiring. Got the front fully put together. Now I'm starting to wire the inside. Um, take a quick close up here, show you where I stand now. I just began. Uh, wiring the first relay, which is the relay that's going to switch everything on. Uh, 
I've got a power switch. When I turn the power switch on, it's going to flip the relay. The relay is going to connect all the hot wires into my uh, terminal panels and uh, power everything up. So let me show you real quick what we got. <clears throat> all right. Right over here. You can see, uh, let me see if I can get over there. All right, here's a little better view uh, of what I'm doing. Now you can see on the terminal block there, uh, on the far left you got a green wire and then a white wire coming off of the cord which comes through the side there. And then you see the red and the blues there. Those are actually wires coming from this first relay here. And you'll notice the, the relay, when it trips, it's going to connect the wire coming from the cord to the wire going to the terminal. And it's going to flip both hots, uh, both the black wire and the red wire that are on the cord. Now I'm using blue wire uh, for my wiring uh, for the black, only because I don't have enough black wire. But uh, it's just fine. Blue's great. But if you look over here... Um, you can see one red wire, and that red wire comes off of my switch. And the reason I've got this wire nut there is I have a hot wire coming off of the cord and going over to the switch and then into the relay. And when I flip the switch, it'll take the hot from the cord, flip the relay, and then it'll let everything go forward. So, um, anyway, it's a start. Long ways to go. But I wanted to show you this before I got too far. Okay, I just finished wiring the buzzer in over there. And there's the buzzer switch. It'll turn it on and off if it goes off. That way I don't have to listen to it. Um, got all the grounds connected together over here. Uh, as I showed before, the first relay's in. Over here, uh, the fan's all wired up uh, to the little 12 volt power supply down there in the bottom. Um, I hot glued that in place so it's not going anywhere. Um, it looks like it's getting kind of tight in the box. Uh, I hope I don't have to be concerned about that, but time will tell. Well, my camera crashed on me, so now I'm recording this with another camera, and the camera on my phone. But I've gotten a lot further. Um, if you see, you can see I've ran a whole lot more wires, and it's getting really snug in there. I have tested uh, putting it down and uh, assembling everything in the box, and it'll fit. But it is definitely... A big bowl of spaghetti but let me show you what I got here um, really everything with the exception of the PIDs wired up um, over here is my uh, relay that turns everything on and off that's controlled by this switch up here when that switch goes on it's gonna flip that relay and it's gonna let power go um, from the relay up to the um, terminal strip and then out to everything else. Um, got a switch here, this black switch, that controls uh, whether or not it goes to the 120 volt or 240 volt relay, which are these right here. Um, the black and white cabled one is 120 volt, red and blue cabled one is the uh, 208 volt. The SSR uh, relay is going to control both of these. Um, if you, you can't really see it, but down here uh, behind there, I've got all of the black wire and blue wires tied together. So once the, either one of these relays is turned on, it's going to go through the SSR and uh, the SSR is going to control any pulsing that's going to be needed based on what the PID tells it what to do. 
Uh, you can see I got the fan over here. Way back here buried that white thing there is the power supply for both the fan and my buzzer. And the buzzer is stuck clear down here. Let's see if I can pull that white wire out of the way and you can see the black buzzer there glued to the side of the um, case. Of course, I've got all my grounding, everything works good. Again, all I have left to do is finish wiring up this PID and wiring in the XLR connector up here. Uh, this switch over here is what I'm going to use to switch a jumper on the PID, which will allow me to switch back and forth between uh, PT100 and K style uh, thermocouple temperature uh, sensors. Uh, anyway, I'll come back. Uh, I expect to have this done in a matter of a few hours. And then I'm going to give it a dry run and see what happens. I'm finished wiring. Um, you can see I've wired up the XLR connector. The switch over here that shows that will jumper. Okay. I finished up all the wiring. Um, up here I got the XLR connector wired. Over here I got the switch that switches it from uh, K-Type to PT100. Uh, I've got all the wires run on my uh, PID. And if you look on the left here, those are the wires from the, uh, or for the sensors. The two red wires go to the high and low of uh, the PT100 and the black wire goes to the center pin of my PT100s. Um, down here on the uh, PID you can see I've got two black wires in this second port from the bottom and one in the third port from the bottom. Now I've got a switch up here that I mentioned that will uh, jumper those two ports together so if that port, which I believe is port 7 and 8, um, no, actually they're ports 8 and 9. It goes uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And uh, anyway, uh, those ports are jumpered together. Over here on the other side, you can see I've got the 15 amp. 120 volt power on the bottom there. Uh, the next two are the positive and negative ports, uh, positive red, negative black, that go over here to my SSR. And you can see the little red wires there. And then on top are the uh, ports that go to my alarm switch, which also has a switch on here that turns it on and off easily. And uh, my buzzer's down at the bottom. I also put a inline fuse on the uh, hot wire here. It's a one amp fuse uh, to protect the PID should something happen. Uh, with that though, I'm done wiring. Now it's ready to button this all up and test it and see if it works. Okay, I'm done. All put together, PID's working. Um, you'll notice this little red light there, that means that it's firing the SSR. And right now it's firing it pretty heavy because I got the temperature set at 173. Let me tell let's turn this temperature down to about 73. And you'll notice the PID's going to blink a little bit. That means it's not firing nearly as much. And actually, I go back over here, you can see the percentage it fires. If I turn the temperature down even more, it's going to hardly fire at all. So you have it. I'm going to have to label my switches. Again, I've got uh, on-off. 
Um, this switch here controls uh, what type of temperature sensor. This one here will control whether I'm doing uh, 110 or 220 volts. This one here controls this outlet right here. Uh, the other outlet's going to be always on. And this one here um, will control the alarm. I'm going to unplug this. Oh, and it looks like I'm. And the alarm went off. Now I turn it off. So, we're good to go. Thanks for watching it. I appreciate uh, your time. Well, I'm back. It's actually been oh, a couple weeks since uh, I did the previous part of my video. And some things have happened. When I went to test my controller, I found that I was having an issue with the element not turning off. Um, I'd set the temperature, it had start the pit had start, the lights had blink in the pit and on the SSR, and for some reason, uh, the uh, element in the kettle just kept going and going and going. It would not stop for anything. Uh, and I could set the temperature for 110 degrees and the kettle would go up to boiling. So um, I've been troubleshooting and to be real honest, I'm not exactly sure what the problem is. Uh, I've gone through a number of SSRs that I had on hand, the uh, solid state relays, which work in conjunction with the PID uh, and fire the element off and on. Uh, to adjust it as the temperature goes up and down. Well, they wouldn't turn off. Uh, the little LED light that's on the PID right there that comes out that little hole there, you can't really see here, it blink like it was turning it on and off. Um, but I'd check the temperature on the element and the temperature was 208 volts or 220 volts, whatever, and uh, would never reduce. Or the temperature, excuse me, the voltage was always 208. Uh, so, what I've done after burning through a handful of SSRs, um, I'm not sure what's blowing them out. The way an SSR is built, uh, it shouldn't be blown out by the PID, but at this point, that's kind of the only thing I have. Uh, I put a known good SSR that I had in a, another controller. I pulled it out and put it in here and I even tested my SSRs in that controller and they were all bad. Um, I put the known good one in and it did the same thing. Well luckily I turned it off really quick because I'm afraid that the PID is burning out my SSRs although I posted questions online and people will tell me that that's not going to happen. Uh, I don't know. So what I did is I ordered uh, a brand new uh, PID and I bought it in combination with an SSR. So I've got a new PID and a new SSR and I'm putting the SSR in right now and I'm going to do some testing. So um, it's always something it seems, uh, but hopefully I'll get this figured out and uh, be able to use my controller. But at this point I'm just taking my time. I've gone over all my wiring, make sure I'm not crossing any wires, made sure that uh, the right voltages are in the right places, and uh, I've simplified it as much as possible while I troubleshoot, and hopefully this time it'll work with the, the new SSR and the new PID. So I'll come back uh, as soon as I'm done and get it figured out and update you. Of course, on the video it's only going to be probably in 30 seconds, but... Anyway, um, I just wanted to fill you in on what's happening. Things do happen. Sometimes you have to uh, go with the flow. Uh, relax, don't worry, have homebrew. Uh, and do what you have to to make it work. So with that, uh, I'll be back. Well, I got it all together. Um, I did replace the pit in the SSR, and that seemed to have fixed my issues. Uh, you'll notice I've also 
on the side opposite the fan drilled a bunch of vent holes so um, it's got a lot of pressure coming out here let's see if I can can't really tell but you can see there's a little bit of airflow here a piece of paper will do it So I got some airflow through it. That'll keep the SSR clean, nice and cool. Um, I've got the uh, PID hooked up to the 120 volt output. And uh, what I'm going to do, just to show you it works, I'm going to flip this power switch over here. Hopefully it doesn't blow my um, ground fault. But, yeah, let's see. Yeah, actually, do the ground in the switch. Um, so yeah, I uh, turned it on before and it did a ground fault, but essentially what it was doing is it was turning my pump on and off, uh, working pretty well. Uh, but uh, there you have it. A nice complete controller. Um, let me give you a quick tour of it. Bring the phone down. Okay. You notice the pit up on top. And over here I got the ability to turn the, uh, the 240 volt outlet into 110 should I want to slow the boil and I can turn it off and cut power to it so that uh, I can real quickly cut power now you'll notice that uh, light right here going on and off as it kicks the uh, oops I'm touching the sensor sorry, sorry I wiggled this thing and it uh, mess with the wire. Let's unplug it and plug it back in. Okay, anyhow, um, it's working really well. Uh, I can have both a PT100 and K mode sensor. Uh, either one will work. I have a pump switch and an alarm silencing switch. Uh, again over here I've got the fan on the outside. And this little hole there is where the buzzer comes out. And here I've got an always on outlet, a uh, switched pump outlet. And then the rims outlet for 110 and the boil outlet for 220. I think it's going to work pretty well. Okay, I've got the. Uh power strip back to normal turn it on here and you'll notice every once in a while the light comes on and if you look up here you can see the fan going so it's working pretty well it's doing what it should I'm going to uh, kick up the temperature just a little bit I mean obviously this isn't really an element I'm just using it to control the the pump to see what happens but it's set kick it back down now when I kick it back down it's probably gonna freak out a little bit Because it does see that big difference now. But then it's going to catch up and slow down a little bit. Works like it should. All 
right, one last test. Um, right now I am uh, learning the element with the controller. And I'll go back down here. If you see in the right here that little green light blinking, that means that the controller is learning the element and the uh, sensor. It overshot it, but it shut things off. And uh, I'll hit the set button. And it's not firing anything right now. And if you listen, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn the temperature up to 150. Temperature. And when I turn it up, I notice the red light on is on there saying the elements kicking off. I don't know if you can hear this, but you can hit that hear the element firing. And uh, the water is starting to bubble a little bit around the element. You can actually see it too. So, while you're there and can hear it, I'm going to turn the temperature down. Well, actually, it's almost up to 150 already, so let's just leave it there. And once it gets close to 150, you should hear the noise go down a little bit. At least I hope you will. That's kind of boring, but it's kind of interesting too. Okay, now the thermometer just hit 150. And it got quiet. Tell you what, I didn't realize I had the TV on in the background. Um, let me do this one more time. Okay, I'm going to turn the temperature up to 160. And I want you to listen. You should be able to hear the element start firing. Okay, here we go. See that? Actually, I had to stick it up to 170. Now, when the element stops firing, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. You can just hear the difference. Kind of interesting. Now, go over here, temperature's a little higher than 160, it's going to go up a little bit, it'll settle down, and it's not firing the element. Well, thank you for watching my video. Um, I hope you learned something. Uh, if I get around to it, I'll draw a schematic and uh, post it with the video, but I wouldn't count on it. Uh, it's taken me a total of maybe... 25 hours to build this and uh, hopefully it'll work pretty well so anyway thanks for watching if you like my videos please subscribe uh, subscriptions help me give me some feedback and uh, I do appreciate it when people like the work so thank you very much and cheers